Welcome to season two of Top Crop. I'm Russell Hedrick. We're here in North Carolina. It's April 27th, and uh, we're here at a field that we've deemed the Kingslayer. Uh, got a friendly competition going on with Corey Atley, and uh, this farm, we've got a mix between corn and beans. Uh, this is our bean field we're standing in today. Uh, beans are just starting to pop up out of the ground. We got them planted early in April. Had some cooler soil temperatures, but they're coming up pretty good. Um, we're shooting for 150 bushels uh, on this particular farm with our fertility and management program. Uh, we've also got a field on this farm where we're going for 500 bushels on our corn. Uh, so we'll just see, uh, see how everything's kind of progressing. We're gonna do some digging, see where the corn's coming up, where the beans are coming up, and, and try to go ahead and make our next pass. See, they're, they're just barely below the surface. So, I mean, another day or two, look at that. But I mean, if you look here, I mean, like we've got a little bit of dryness here in about the top eighth inch, but it is just, I mean, look right here. I don't know if you can zoom in. When we talk about healthy soils, what we want to look for, one, and this little guy doesn't want to be caught today, but I mean, we're running about 90 to 100 earthworms in the top cubic foot. Um, if you convert that over, that's about three and a half to four million earthworms per acre. But look at that aggregation. I'm not knocking on the conventional till guys, but you're not gonna see big old aggregates like these right here in a conventional till system. I mean, this ground is just full of tilth. You can see the beans are starting to push up through it. Let's, uh, let's see how deep our taproot goes. We've already got an inch and a half of growth on that plant. Um, it's still got about a half inch to pop up out of the ground. We planted these beans at two inches deep, but you know, right here, we're just starting to break the surface. We'll have these up before the end of the month. And that's typically, we get beans up and out of the ground in the month of April. That's our best yielding beans. And if you're gonna be shooting for, you know, 80, 90, 100 plus bushels, that's really where you gotta be at. Um, you know, you're not going to be out here planting May beans, you know, typically seeing them go over 100. But we've essentially got this whole area planted here. We had a lot of flood damage on this farm. Uh, last year it flooded twice, just freak storms. Um, we had a really bad storm come through back in January. We had about eight foot of water on top of this field. So we were kind of concerned about biologicals, you know, being anaerobic underwater. Um, so we're, we're trying different things. We're running the organics in the deep injection. Um, we're running organics in furrow, trying some of those out, which one's working best, the insole algae, um, playing around, you know, with the vermicompost, either from Fed and Happy, where we're making our own extracts, or uh, working with a company this year called Elm Dirt, where they, they pre, you know, make the extract pre before it comes to us, it's just a liquid. But, you know, if you, if you look at that fertilizer bar that we were on yesterday, and so our fertilizer bar is running here and here on either side of the row. And then that planter's coming back and split in the middle. And so, you know, right there's two inches, there's three inches. Right here's our soybean seed. And we're exactly three inches off to the side. Um, you know, when we were watching the monitor while we were planting on the GPS, you know, it was within a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Uh, where our pass needed to be and we're seeing the same thing where these beans are coming up and and we've got this coulter cut in the ground from the first pass the planters perfectly centering that up so you know we've got those nutrients right here within this root zone um, if we need to do anything else on these beans we can come out because we're planting on 30s we can wide drop it just like we do the corn should we see a need to do that but um, you know if you're looking to if you're looking to maximize nutrients and efficiency, we're only probably using anywhere from about 10 to 15% of an acre on a 30 inch row. So that means if you're broadcasting dry fertilizer, 85% of that is, is not within the, the realm of where that plant's root system is. Now you'll see some lateral roots go out into the row middles, but it's not a lot. Um, but by, by placing these nutrients, we're increasing the efficiency of that fertilizer three to five fold at a minimum. Um, and then going deeper, because our, our corn and beans, the roots don't grow perfectly horizontal, they grow at an angle. And so we've got to get that deeper placement so when those roots continue to grow out and grow down, they're able to hit this band probably within the first month and a half. And when they hit this, I mean, it's, it's a night and day difference in what we're seeing on our tissue samples throughout the whole season. So 
you know, just simple stuff like this, whether it's dry, you know, we've got a dry bar that we're building for this fall where we can cut our cost per nutrient by half. Um, so we'll be running some dry in the fall, some liquid in the spring, and that'll save us even more money. So, you know, just ways to, to maximize the fertilizer that we are using. Let me check out some corn.